The Politics of a Prepared and Determined Tribe by Professor Anselm Oromusalem, Professor of Political Science Published June 16, 2022 Yes, the presidential primaries of the political parties, especially PDP and APC, have come and gone but not with the hidden messages that only the great thinkers can unravel and reveal. What really played out is a crafted and schemed plot of a prepared and determined tribe, the Fulani tribe. It's all about strengthening their hold on power and deepening their roots on the soil of Nigeria to emasculate and strangulate other tribes. Make no mistake about this, the emergence of Article for PDP and Tinubu for APC was neither accidental nor coincidental. No, it was a well-calculated and schemed plot by a people who have intentionally and consciously become masters of the game of survival. APC, with the help of INEC, knowingly or unknowing, had to wait for the outcome of PDP primaries to be sure they got their man, article, as the flag bearer, before they had their own. Once the PDP ticket had been secured by their own, having outsmarted the southern candidates, they knew they were not going to take any chance with the marriage of the Igbos and the Yorubas. Alliance which would have been necessitated and triggered by a common feeling of injustice and the northern, Fulani, show of domination and lordship. The Fulanis have always known that the very day this wedding takes place, that same day, their dominance will come to an end. So while they try to emasculate the Igbos, they allow the Yorubas to have a feel of the booty and a piece of the cake. The cake, their wise elders, like Po Odebanjo, have repeatedly told them, would be bigger, richer, sweeter and more lasting, if they join hands with their Igbo brothers to bake. So to widen this gap and strengthen this wall of division, between the Igbos and Yorubas, Tinyabu, a Yoruba man, who they will never give the presidency, has to be given the ticket to assuage the Southwest, for now, against the Igbos who are rightfully entitled to the ticket. Buhari was ready for a North, North ticket. He didn't care. But the wise men led by El Rufai talked him out of it, having known the immediate implication of that. Don't forget, it was just few days to the primaries that Tinyabu bust out on Buhari and APC leadership. An action the APC chairman said would not go unpunished. And that punishment was to make him the party's flag bearer. What a punishment. The question then is, why the preference of Tinyabu to Osimbanjo? Remember, El Rufai did not allow Tinyabu to see the Kaduna delegates, which he promised he would give to Amichi. El Rufai is the head of the Fulani agenda. It was article that brought him to limelight and gave him political relevance when he made him the FCT minister in OBJ's government. So for their continuity in power and survival as a people, article, one of their own, must be there. Buhari and Co never wanted to give power to either Osimbojo or Tinyabu. They chose Tinyabu over Osimbanjo to avoid the kind of crisis Tinyabu, with his resources, would have caused them even before the election. And as a master strategist himself, who probably knows what they know, except what they would do to him during this election, they figured out that appeasing him for now is a lesser evil. The fear of Tinyobu slash Wiki galvanizing the South for a showdown with them was the beginning of wisdom. For the Fulanis, they don't have any business with party but position. Where their man is, that's the party for them. Do not be deceived. Choosing APC or PDP is like choosing between six and half a dozen or as was trending in the social media, choosing between Sniper and Otepiepia. Why didn't they allow the South to chair the parties into their primaries? Is it any coincidence that they both zoned the chairmanship of their parties to the North and still nurse the ambition of producing the presidential candidates? No, I don't think so. It's not coincidence, but confidence. Any day, any time, this article, we know, will beat this tenable, we know, hands down. Not because there is any difference in their character or agenda for the nation, but because the APC heavy ways in the north will obviously tambourize tenable, after draining him dry and rally round their man, article, to strengthen the Fulani dynasty. Now the big question is this, at what point did the 13 northern APC governors know that it was the turn of the south to produce the next president? Why didn't they support the southern governors when they made the same call last year? If they did, would Atiku and other northerners have come out? Or was it only for those in APC? If Atiku wins, which is their game plan, would power have returned to the south? 
The Contemplation of a Muslim Muslim Ticket for APC, by El Rufia on Channels TV, was it in the interest of Atiku or Tinyabu? Will Tinyabu commit this political suicide of choosing a Muslim as a vice, to please these hawks, knowing the implications? It's just a matter of days. Yes, while it's wisdom to plan, it's senseless planning on what you cannot control. You can control your actions, but you can't control the consequences. Why the Fulanis may think that they have emasculated and castrated the leadership of these ethnic groups who have sworn allegiance to serve them and others outside the government, whom they gave money for contract and asked not to execute them, so as to pin EFCC on them, once they opened their mouths, they did not factor in the revolution that the youth of these ethnic groups are coming up with. Revolution that will bring a serious shake up in our political system. A revolution activated, precipitated and triggered by the force of hope and assurance which Peter Obi, the flag bearer of the Labour Party, has come to personify and epitomize. Peter Obi has begun a movement that has even gone beyond him. In him, the people are seeing hope, honesty, integrity, prudence, accountability, intelligence and human feelings. In him, they genuinely believe Nigeria will rise again. They believe supporting Peter Obi is not helping him but helping themselves and taking back their country, their only country. Never in the history of Nigerian politics has a presidential candidate been this accepted to the point that the electorates are spending their own resources for him rather than the candidate giving them money for their votes. They are convinced that they are investing for themselves, not for Peter Obi. That if he becomes president, they are sure of returns on their investments. That Peter Obi could go to a virgin party and turn it into a movement and a force in the political arena shows truly that he makes things happen. That he can build from nothing to something truly confirms that he will indeed turn Nigeria from consumption to production. Here are my critical questions. 1. Why would Tinyabu who knows and has publicly said that he brought Buhari, the most nepotic, tribalized, clueless and worst president Nigeria has ever and will ever have, still have the guts to come out for president instead of hiding his head in shame and apologizing to the nation if he cares a hoot about this country? How will any man with conscience, if not for the exhibition of selfishness of the highest order, come out for president? 2. Why is Atiku, who has run for this office for the fifth or more time, the only tribe whose candidates keep resurfacing in every election, still coming out this time around? 1. Knowing the damage a northern Fulani man has done and is still doing in this country. 2. Knowing that he, too, is a northern Fulani man. 3. Knowing that it's constitutional for PDP to rotate power between north and south. 4. Knowing that it's the turn of southeast, the region that gave him almost 100% of their votes. 5. Knowing that this region and her people are being punished today because of the votes they gave him and he never uttered a word against it nor stood up to defend them. 6. And knowing that this region has been the bedrock of PDP since 1999. If it's just politics and not the pursuit of an ethnic agenda, how would any man, with conscience, come out at this sensitive and fragile time when Nigerian existence has a question mark? A man who has never condemned anything the Fulanis have done. A man who has never called Buhari by name in condemnation rather APC government. My submission. It has taken the Fulanis almost 60 years to scheme themselves to where they are now. Controlling economic, military and political powers in Nigeria. So they want Atiku there, for at least, the next four years to perfect what they have begun. Tinabu victory is not an option, they will not allow it except for a Muslim, Muslim, Fulani, ticket, so that they would do to the south what they thought OBJ did to the north, taking Tinebo out, considering his health condition and having the Fulani VP ascend the presidency. Never you underrate or estimate what these people can do. In the light of the above, like Paul Odebanjo advised too, I will want every Nigerian, who truly loves this nation, to brace up for tough and rough times ahead. These people are ready and would not, having come this far, willingly relinquish power to any other tribe. They are ready even for war. The import of the Fulanis from all over the world into Nigeria is not to rear cattle but to use the weapons that they have long amassed for war, having successfully, 
disarmed most Nigerians of their weapons for defense. The good news now is the readiness of the youths too, from every region, to take back their country, with the mantra, Behold, old things are passed away, and all things have become new. The emergence of these youths at this point in time has altered their equation because they were not factored in, in their calculation. The survival of this nation, Nigeria, truly lies in the hands of these youths and now is the time. Postscript This article gave an excellent insight into the chess game the Fulani are playing with Southern Pawns. The PDP heist against the East on Caliphate Victory Day, May 29th, is the clue that every move on the board has been confidently planned. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media. Download the BG Media app today or visit barglobal.net for more podcasts. Thank <music> you.